Hello again, this is SF Giants Fed Mike coming to you today with another Fate Series video, or Fate Journey video in my case. Um, okay guys, so as you can see here, I've been kind of continuing on in the Prisma Ilya series. Technically, it's technically I think going into the second series, it changes into this. Prisma Ilya Two-Way Hers. Um, no idea how to properly pronounce that. Um, anyway, guys, you, you know, the series, this is the series you guys suggested to me in some of my videos and oh my gosh, thank you guys for that. Um, this has been a pretty fun series. Um, my last review that I did kind of touching on Prisma Ilya, I'd gotten through episode six of the season one, um, where we see Ilya first become a catalyst for Archer. And that was kind of cool. We get to see uh, Miyu picks up right on that skill not too long, uh, not too much later. And we get to see kind of a cameo of Saber slash Artoria. That was epic. I was really happy with that. One thing this series does really well is it does pretty good fan service. In, not fan service in the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it does that fan service, but it does it horribly. Um, and quite honestly, I don't know how much further I could make it in this series because of it, but I'll get there in a minute, guys. But the real fan service that is bringing like kind of like Dragon Ball Super fan service or uh, Legend of Korra fan service, where they bring up the previous series um, and kind of give you the nostalgia feels. I love the way they do that fan service. This isn't a show about Rin. This isn't a show about Shiro or even uh, Iris feel. I just call it Iris because I pronunciations are. If you guys have listened to me long enough by now, you're like, yeah, he doesn't do very good on that. Um, but yeah, it's not about Iris. It's not about oh my gosh, uh, the older Emiya, um, the Shiro and Kitty. I want to say Kiritsugu, but Emiya the father. Uh, it's not about, this series is not about them. It's about Ilya. And I like that. I like the focus on that, but I like that we get to see the bits and pieces of these characters that through for me, for fate zero and for fate, uh, or, and, uh, unlimited blade works. I got to see them. I got to come to love them. And they're what really launched my fandom here for fates. And I, as you can tell, I'm even going through something that I really, would not normally go through. Um, I really like... Oh, my gosh. All right, guys, I'm just going to get the rant out of the way. And I am hoping this rant doesn't last like an hour. Um, in fact, I'll cut myself short if I keep repeating or whatever. All right, guys. The thing that really, really, really gets me about this series and why I might drop it. I'm getting really, really uncomfortable... With all the, I'll just put it bluntly, the sexual nature of the series. Um, it's not necessarily that there's sex. Um, it's that they are playing around with innuendos. They're playing around with uh, with the whole mana transference. Um, I know, uh, actually, I just listened to a, uh, I don't want to say it was a Taku Daikun. I was listening to one, I believe I was listening to one of his lore videos and uh, not about the Fate series, but another one in the Nasu verse. Oh my gosh, I should know this. I just listened to it Friday, yesterday, maybe Thursday. It was so interesting. Anyway, he has a uh, comment in there about uh, bas basically that semen is the like magical cure. In this universe or series of universes or however you want to think about it. Um, and that's something I want to cover later. I hope I remember to cover it because I'm in rant mode <laughs> or kind of rant mode. But uh, the thing is in the Nasu verse or whatever, they have all these predetermined, I'm going to say adult things. Um, I won't necessarily say they are necessarily wrong to have in a story. Um, 
you know, the transferring mana through saliva or other bodily fluids or the only thing that way. Okay, I get it. I get it. He wants to do that. It's been there. But now he's kind of doing a series where he's focusing on 10 year old girls and he, and they decided to continue with those underlying methods. Um, it's really one of those things. That's kind of a dichotomy. I think even, is it Mew or is it uh crudo? Uh, this one right here. And I asked, that is not what I was attempting to do. I'm trying to do the Yeah. That where you just see the dot on her face. Okay. <sighs> Technical issues with my phone there, guy. Anyway, I think she brings it up where she's saying, you know, for Ilya, this world of mages in the Nasuverse, uh, she was saying, you know, might be too dirty, too bloody, too etc. for Ilya. And honestly, like, I guess with uh, Fate Zero and Unlimited Blade Works, the, you know, animes I went through, and even uh, Apocrypha, um, they kind of gloss over those adult parts, but for some odd reason, Prisma Ilya is like sticking with it. And I don't know. It just squicks me out. Um, fine. Okay. You got to get mana transferred between Ilya and Kuro or Kuro or however you pronounce her name. Um, okay. They got a kiss. Do it off screen. I don't need to see that. Um, like I said, guys, this stuff is getting close to driving me from a series that I'm really liking. A lot of how they're pulling off the plot. I like how they're pulling off the action scenes. I like a lot of the character development. Although poor Shiro. Um, you know, that, that was one of the characters that I'll kind of pull in here and talk about. I kind of feel like poor Shiro. All right. This is kind of part of the rant. And this is the one way I think they kind of do it all right. Where, you know, they want to play around with uh, innuendo and stuff. With Shiro, I mean, I feel bad for the guy. But for some odd reason, Iris and the rest of the girls are just like, oh, man, you're just trying to touch him up or this, that, or the other. Um and he's like, no, I'm not. It's not like that. It's I have pure intentions, or at least naive intentions. Um, and uh, and they play that off so well. Um, I feel bad for the guy because you know he gets blamed because Kur Kuro or Kuro. I always want to put the accent on it. Kuro, you know, jumps in bed to him in bed with him without his knowledge or acceptance. And she's in, she doesn't wear pajamas like we do here in America. Apparently, even with uh, Ilya, she wears the typical shirt and panties to bed. Um, I hate to actually say that out loud. That, that, that just creeps me out even. Uh, uh, and just the way she was positioned, it was bad. It was bad looking, but that wasn't. Shiro's fault and he gets blamed by everybody. Um, I'm guessing I'm I've kind of heard of these things in anime where you get this guy that gets blamed for, you know, you know, the girl walks uh I forget where I heard what anime they were talking about, but someone says, you know, like someone a girl walks into the guy while he's in the shower screams bloody murder and somehow it's her me too moment. Um, not to make light of the me too mo movement or anything guys, but it's like, it's his fault somehow, even though he locked the door, he's in the shower and she's the one walking in, he gets blamed. And this is, I guess my first time really seeing this in anime. Um, and Shiro is unfortunately the fall guy for these jokes. Um, but I kind of, like I said, kind of going back to the point of why I might leave, drop the series, is that they do sometimes right, but a lot of times they're going so far the other way, it's just too darn creepy for me. 
In the first season, there was some of that. But ever since they went to this two-way hers version of the series, it's just gone. It's just decided to jump in there and stay in there and play in there. And I'm totally uncomfortable with it. In fact, I haven't watched any of the series. I mean, I was sick for a whole day looking for things to watch um, on Wednesday. And I was going to watch it. And I just, I can't do it. Um, I'm. I may have already dropped it and not know it. Um, I plan to kind of come back to it and watch it because it's the only bit of the Fates, the Nasu verse that I have at my fingertips that I can watch. It's something where I could go back and watch old favorites, even if it's not the continuation of the story that I like. Um, I get to continue the story or get to see them progress some more. It's nice. But now here we are, and yeah, I might be done with this. But I am definitely not done with Fates. Um, I just bought this today. This is stock footage, by the way, on the internet, not a picture I took with my phone or anything. Um, because I downloaded it digitally. Um, yay, I get to play with some of my favorite people. Yay, um. I haven't actually started to play it yet. Um, I got it. I downloaded it. Then I went to dinner. And then when I got back from dinner, I wanted to make this video. So I'm definitely going to be continuing in the Nasu verse. Um, I've got this. I want to play through it. I get to use characters. I A lot of these characters I mainly met in Fate Grand Order, which was, dang, that's a such a missed opportunity for Type Moon. I want to continue on with that game. And I just cannot mentally bring myself to do it because I just can't. The gotchas are getting me or that might be a video for another day, guys, where it might not just be fake grand order and that they do the gotcha so bad or gotcha or however you want to put it. But I even played a uh, distant final fantasy late recently where they give you all the characters for free. Um, it's, a bit of a grind to level up and, you know, power up your characters and you need to get, you still have a Gasha aspect, but it's weapons and armor. So it's not nearly as bad as anything else. I mean, even Dokkan battle, uh, the other game, I'm actually going to do another video after I get done with this one. Um, even with Dokkan battle, which is the best, uh, gotcha game I've ever played played prior to Dissident of Final Fantasy um, it does it better than that um, the main problem is I just don't want to deal with all these random I just don't want to deal with the randoms anymore guys <laughs> I'm totally burnt out on getting all this random getting what I need through random number generation um, I know even going into regular console games these days, that's kind of hard. But, uh, man, I'm just so tired of that right now. I might make a more detailed video on it, not just an off-the-cuff one like this. But I'm I'm done with ga gashas that I'm not like deeply invested to, like Dokkan Battle. But anyway, so back to Fate Excel. I know I, I want to play... The one on the PSP, I own a PSP, but that means I need to get a hold of uh, the cartridge. Um, so I'm going to look into that. Fate, I want to say it's Freight Fate Extra, the prequel to this, but they're also coming out with an anime Fate Extra. So I'm kind of waiting to see if Verve will get these. You know, since Verve isn't just Crunchyroll, it's a whole bunch of channels. Um, so far, they have not got it. And the other thing I found, I think I might have mentioned this last week too, guys, is the Slice of Life Emia cooking show or whatever. I don't know what all they're doing with that, but I saw it and I want to see it. So I'm trying to figure out how to find those. And I'm trying to find... Um, if I can't find... Uh, Decent way to get a hold of Fate Stay Night. Um, I'm going to try 
uh, I still got a email type moon. I said I was going to do that last weekend, and then I got caught up. My uh, niece and nephews came over uh, and spent some time with me, and I totally forgot to, e- you know, find the email and email them about, hey, how about you release the PS2 version in English on the PS, you know, the PSN uh, on the PlayStation Store? So that, you know, we could buy it for buy it and make you money rather than buy it and make some random dude on eBay money. Uh, especially since I have a feeling any of the copies I buy on there are going to be burnt copies for two hundred dollars. You know, um, I want to get the game. I want to play the game. I want to do it legitly. Um, but what I'm thinking, since they have Unlimited Blade Works kind of covered uh, in anime form. They're making uh, Heaven's Feel Route in movie form. And they've kind of done, from what I understand, they've kind of done the Fates Route in anime form again. I'm going to see if I can find the anime from 2006 or whatever it is. From what I hear, it's not as good as Unlimited Blade Works. But I'll get to see the characters again. And I'll get to see that story told properly. Um, Because otherwise, my... Only realistic solution is to either pirate the game, which again I don't want to do, or to watch um how do you put it? Let's plays of Fate Stay Night uh on YouTube. And I've got one guy in my I found somebody who actually did it already and it's there for me to watch. I'm three or four videos into it, but I'm sitting there and it's like since I'm not interacting, it's kind of boring. Um, maybe the whole thing is boring. And I think I have kind of a personality clash with the guy. I appreciate that he went 177 episodes deep to get through the fates, uh, the fates route. But at the same time, it's like, eh, I don't really know if this style is going to work for me on the let's play to get through it. But uh, I'm definitely going to try to track down the 2006 anime uh see if i can and see how much that's gonna cost see if i can find it duh i i think they dubbed it for release but then that might be cost prohibitive too i don't know we will see if i can get it for like 50 bucks the whole thing i will probably do it um just because i want to i want to i want somewhere or another to give uh fate tight moon and the game producers away and just say thanks for all this stuff. And I want to see, cause it's interesting and all that good stuff. Um, but anyway, yeah. All right guys. So that pretty much ends what I have to talk about my, you know, the journey of my fates fandom here. Um, I will get back to you on fate, Extella, the Emerald star. I might even try to do a let's play. Um, we will see, like I started to do a couple of let's plays on Skyrim and it's easy. Um, as long as you uh, take the time to edit them as you're going. I have like three or four playthroughs. I think I'm going to get rid of two of them and focus on one on Skyrim. <laughs> but I got to go in there and edit out all the, you know, the, um, how do you put it? All the dead time. Um, or maybe I just thought, just say the heck with it. It's a let's play and throw it all up. I don't know. Um, but that being said, Skyrim's easy because they don't have cutscenes where PlayStation locks you out of your recording. And that really, really, uh, I, I tried to do it for Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Dragon Ball Fighters, depending on who you talk to. Excuse me. Um, I tried to do it and then I'd be in the middle of a fight. Then it goes to the part where they actually show you the cutscene and then it blocks the cutscene. And that totally just kills your flow um at least it did for uh dragon ball fighters for me you know i was trying to do it um i'll probably put some videos up of dragon ball fighters later once i get through the story mode um i'm on the last one i'm just past the part where we talked to krillin uh but anyway I want to I want to get that up because I really enjoy I really enjoy the gameplay. 
I really liked the story, but it really bummed me out that since this is on the PS4, they're, you know, they break it up. And that brings that to this. I'm hoping that their cutscenes aren't cut out and blocked. I'm guessing they're going to be, though, um, just because this is PlayStation and that's how they do it. Um, if there's actual cutscenes. Uh, so I'll see if I can make that into a let's play or something of those, something along those lines. If not, I'll come and talk about it. Um, this is just kind of honestly, guys, these are just my oops. I accidentally tilted the phone wrong. I don't see guys, these videos that I do are just on the weekends. I'm talking about it. I'm kind of chronicling my journey through the Nasu verse. Um, and through all these, what all the good old what ifs. <laughs> And that's the last thing I actually want to talk about eh, very briefly, guys, is that I know a lot of you guys kind of been t or at least one of you have kind of been telling me, hey, they're all all these. Oops. Sorry, guys. There we go. My phone was about to cut off again. Um, I know you guys have all been telling me that all of these are all these stories are in our canon. Um, and I appreciate that you're trying to. Um, how do you put it? You're trying to educate me about it. I love that guys. Keep anything that I, you think I'm missing. Feel free to let me know if you guys know it, but that's what I think I like so much about the fates first. All right. I come from a Marvel background. Let's just put it that way. In Marvel background in Marvel, technically everything is canon. You know, the what ifs they're canon. There's a universe in the multiverse where that what if actually happened. Um, the difference between the Marvel verse and the Nasu verse is that the Marvel verse has a prime continuity. So when we talk about canon in the Marvel universe, we usually talk about what's happening in the 616, the Marvel prime universe. Um, you know, like in Dragon Ball, it has a prime universe. It has a multiverse as well. It also has alternate timelines, which have even more multiverses. Um, I won't go into the whole thing of Dragon Ball, but uh, it too has a prime. So when you say it's canon, um, you're talking about canon in the prime timeline. Uh, here in the Nasuverse, that I think is what I'm appreciating. It's all canon. It's all happened. It's But it's still all what ifs. And I love it because it's like, you know, those really bad route you might take. Oh my gosh. Like for me, um, again, I haven't actually played through this or read through this, but I've gone through lore videos. So I know in the heavens feel route and in the heavens feel movie, apparently, um, Arturia gets corrupted by the grail mud. Um, I'm not sure the exact who's and the hows and the whys, that is so sad to me that Arturia is not going to really get to be Arturia. From my understanding of the altars and the lore videos that I've, you know, listened to on it, it seems that altar just inverts them, you know, that goes from lawful good to maybe she's going to lawful evil. Uh, uh, so, you know, it flips her personality. Um, although you think it'd be chaotic evil if it's truly inverse. Anyway, guys, um, so I know I know that happens, and I know as much as like for me the prime uh, what do you call it? Oh my gosh, the prime reality or whatever is the uh, or the one I'm most fond of is the Unlimited Blade Works route and uh, Fate Stay Night. Um, but both of, I love the fact that both of them are canon. The author doesn't have to say, hey, Unlimited Blade Works is canon, or Heaven's Feel is canon, or the Fates Route was canon. They're all canon. And I think even in the game, there's even more... Uh, how do you put it? Man, I've gone kind of long on this, guys, and I apologize. I'm just... I, as you see, I'm just kind of gushing over the things that I've liked in my journey here, guys. These are not... I'm no longer going to try to make these concise. If I ramble a bit and go on rabbit trails, oh, I apologize. Um, this is more for me just 
to kind of have something I can go back and, oh, yeah, I remember when I was just learning about that later. And if you guys get some uh, enjoyment out of it, um, that's awesome. Um, the fact that a few of you guys are like commenting and uh, watching each one of these when all you're seeing is a still picture for the most part. Uh, I really appreciate that, guys. Um because really, I don't have another community where I can go to and uh, talk to other people that know about the Fates verse. So it's kind of cool to see your comments. And actually, on my last video, I got to go and respond to some comments. I saw them come in, but this week has just been crazy. Um, and then I clear out all my notifications and I, I don't see them there. And I'm not at a place normally at work. Like sometimes at work. You get that minute or two where I can sneak in and make a comment or take a break and comment to comment with you guys. These last two, three f weeks have just been crazy. I work in, uh, just so you guys know a little bit about me, I might have mentioned it before, but I work in the circuit board industry. I make, oh, well, I sell technically PCBs for a living. Um, I'm in the sales department of our shop uh, and China this last week or so has been completely and utterly shut down. And what most people do for PCBs, to be honest, unless they need a prototype run, they go to China <laughs> and China has been closed. So we've been people, all, you know, either preparing or in emergency mode or coming to us. And it's just crazy amount of work. Um, and one day I was like, oh, man, I can't go get anything to eat right now. Oh, hey, someone just handed me a sandwich, and I didn't think about the fact that that sandwich had been sitting out for four or five hours. So I ate it and suffered the consequences on Wednesday, or really Tuesday night into Wednesday, almost into Thursday. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was not a fun time. Um, definitely regretted that decision. But anyway, guys. So to finish up my little side thought here on Canon and why I love it and try to end the video after like 30 minutes. I think it's been about 30 minutes now. Um, yeah, man, this has just been so cool to go through it. I love the fact that there's no one central canon storyline. I love the fact that that allows them to play with even the rules, like, you know, going, coming back over here, a lot of the rules seem that they're broken. Uh, if you go back to Fate Stay Night, um, but that's okay. Cause you know what? They're totally separate things. Um, honestly with, uh, Prisma Ilya, this seems to kind of have been a continuity in which, I don't know. I don't know where I'm guessing the Holy Grail was used instead of just destroyed two times. And it affected the timeline where now Ilya's younger and her family aren't homunculi anymore. I, again, I'm not all the way through Prisma Ilya. So maybe they are still homunculi. I don't know. Um, no, I don't, I don't know. With that one scene with uh, Iris when she first came back. Maybe they are still. And maybe then the wish altered them into being full-fledged humans with full-fledged lives. I don't know. You see, now I want to go back and finish it, even though I'm squicked out by Prisma Ilya. It totally squicks me out. These are 10-year-old girls, and you're doing that with them. There's 10, maybe 11-year-olds. I'm like, ah, come on. I know Ilya is supposed to be 18 in the, you know, from Fate Stay Night. She was 8 in Fate Zero, then there was 10 years, so she's supposed to be 18. So the fact that she might look young, and I guess is the quote-unquote lolly, or whatever you want to say, there's at least a reason for that. You know, she's a homunculus. She doesn't mature as fast. She had a full life. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, guys. Anyways, I just like like that about that. I don't have to think too hard about Prisma Ilya or Fate Stella. The rules might break in between these stories, but the way they set up their universe and their continuity and their canon or however you want to put it, there is no prime reality. So you don't have to worry about all that stuff. And I love it. Or maybe there is a prime reality and I just don't know it yet. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm a month and a half 
month, month and a half, two months into my journey down the fate, the fate road, the Nasu verse, or however you want to put it, guys. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying these uh, uh, animes, the special, even the games. If I could just get over the gotcha, I'll go back to Grand Order because I was loving the story. The gotcha, oh man, you just get all like a one comment. I think it was on the new one. It started out something along the lines of, oh, hey, uh, this is what I watch when I get all salty about the gotcha in Grand Order. <sighs> I got to I got to find a way to deal with it because I love the story. I just get burnt out on the, me- the mechanics. But even with Dokkan Battle, one of my favorite gotcha games, I got kind of burnt on it at the beginning of the year. Or so and I'm actually about to face kind of the, oh, sorry, guys, I keep flipping between the two pictures um and i'm kind of going to feel the consequences because tomorrow the lr androids campaign goes away and i didn't realize it was going to be that much of a grind since i was starting from not not from zero but i was starting from maybe 25 percent. i didn't realize going from the tur to the lr was going to require like seven medals or six or seven different medals, 77 of them each. Oh, I'm only like halfway through that grind. I don't think I'm going to make it. Anyway, guys, so thank you so much if you guys stuck through my ramblings here on the Nasuverse. Thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. Um, for those of you that are watching and commenting, I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with me. I'm trying to get... You know, cut, I'm trying to make my way through the Nasuverse. It's been a fun ride. Um, sometimes there's twists and turns and and squicks. Um, but yeah, I'm navigating it and I'm having a blast. I haven't had this much of a blast with a new IP in... Oh, geez, I can't even think of how long. Um, maybe since the Wheel of Time when my... That and that was like 15 years ago or more. When my gosh, no, that was 99. I was introduced. Oh my gosh, that was almost 20 years ago. That was almost 20 years ago. But I haven't had this much fun with the new IP. Let's just say in 20 years. Um, it's great. Um, I'm having fun with it. And I continue, I'm gonna continue down this path and I'm gonna continue vlogging my experiences just just because. All right, guys, thank you very much. And I'm not, I don't, okay. Let's end on that picture for whatever reason. (laughs) I will see you guys next time. Thank you.